praise the Lord, our dear viewers. We thank you that you have joined us for today's service. We want to begin our service with prayer as usual. So I want to ask you to join together with us as we petition from the Lord. He tells us not to be anxious of anything, but in everything in prayer and supplication, we may make our requests be known to God. Father, in the name of our Lord Jesus, we appreciate that you have given us a chance and an opportunity to call to your name. You say that we may be able to do an exchange, that we may give you your, our baggages, that you may give you what has weighed us down, and that you may receive to you your burden that is light and your yoke that is easy. This is what we choose to do this morning. And we ask that, Lord, may you begin with us. Take away, roll away all our burdens. Remove all things that have yoked us in a way that we are not free to do what we ought to do. And we ask that in the name of our Lord Jesus, call into the anointing of the Lord that breaks every yoke and every burden. Let it rest upon each one of us this morning. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Our viewers, God asks us to call to him. And he says this in the book of uh, Acts. The story is told of a certain uh, centurion by the name of Cornelius. And he was a gentile. He was not a Jew, meaning he was not entitled to the rights that the Jews had. But because he had kept the ordinances, he was one who was kind to giving alms. Uh, he built a memorial for himself. And God looked to him and he said, this man deserves not to perish. And therefore a disciple by the name of Peter was sent to him that the good news of salvation would be spoken to him. And he was willing and ready to receive. And therefore after this, there are arose uh, uh, a conflict in Jerusalem, wondering why this uh, who was a Gentile had been given uh, the joy or the rights or the inheritance that was known to be for the Jews. And so in response, in verse number 34, Peter says, then Peter opened his mouth and said, in truth, I perceive that God shows no partiality, but in every nation, whoever fears him and works righteously is accepted by him. The word which God sent to the children of Israel, preaching peace through Jesus Christ, he is Lord over all. And so the word of God gives us this assurance that Every nation, whoever fears him and works righteousness, is accepted by him. I do not know what you have been through this week. I do not know what are challenges that you are foreseeing and are ahead of you. But I want to tell you this as the Bible is telling us this morning, that whoever fears the Lord and whoever works righteousness is accepted by him. I want us to pray for our families. I want to pray for the people around us. I want us to pray for those that are affected, be it in our workplaces, our colleagues, those that we interact with, that we may be, our ways may be acceptable to the Lord. And he says that whoever works righteously, him he receives as his own. It does not matter what your yesterday was like, but if today you are ready to say, yes, Lord, here I am and ready to walk with you, he's able to carry us through. We thank you, our Lord. Your word tells us that you showeth no partiality. You showeth no favoritism. And whoever works righteousness and that person is acceptable to God. We yield ourselves to you this morning, bringing our families to you, O oh Lord, crying that, Lord, you may be able to help us to walk righteously before you. We seek that, Lord, within these times, we have seen families, uh, spouses rising against the other. We have seen uh, mothers do what? What, we, uh, what is even unmentionable for it is written in the book of Isaiah that you love us more than a mother would love th their child but in these times we have seen the same mother take up the, their children and even take their lives uh, because of this current situation but we call to the name of the Lord that we may be a people that shall walk in the pathway of righteousness that we shall be a people that shall look above what is around, around and surrounding us and lift our eyes to the Lord. The writer of the book of Psalms says, 
that I lift my eyes to the heavens. And from whence that does my help come? But my help cometh from the Lord. And because the same Bible says that the Lord shows no favoritism, whoever will lift their eyes to you this morning, I pray that, Lord, you may hold them with your hand of favor. Whoever lifts their eyes to you, Lord, I pray that, Lord, they may be acceptable to you. Look to this woman who is looking to you. Look to this man. Look to this young man. Look to this lady. May they be acceptable to you. And may you be able to answer their prayers. For you say, ask, and it shall be given to you. Seek, and you shall find. Knock, and the door shall be opened to you. Let our doors be opened as we show favor to our families. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. There is this account in the book of John chapter number 9. And this blind man, who was bl born blind, so... Uh, Jesus meets the man and he heals this man. And after he receives his, uh, he receives his sight, there the causes a commotion uh, within the rabbis and the people that were, uh, were in uh, the place and they were asking, how, how true is it that this man is a man of God? And so they said that he used different powers and they called the man because he had been healed on a Sabbath day. And I love the way he answered them. When they called his parents, his parents answered the, the teachers of the law and told them, the man is of age, you can ask him. And when he was asked of the same, he answered, he responded and said, I do not know. All that I know, I do not know whether he did it with the right spirit or not. But all that I know is that I was blind, but now I see. The man was obedient enough when Jesus uh, put uh, soil and mud on his face and was told to go and wash in the, in the uh, sea or the lake of Siloam. He followed every instruction. I want to ask us, are we obedient to the instructions that we are given by our Lord Jesus Christ? When he gives us things, you know, in a normal occurrence, he is blind and something else is added on top of the blindness. So he becomes double blind. We justify our positions, but he did everything in obedience and later on received his sight. And when they questioned that which he had received, when they question your faith, remember this is what you received when you believed. It is good to be like the man in this account, John chapter number nine, and says, I do not know, I do not care, I do not want to understand whatever you are talking about, but all I know is this, that I was blind and now I see. I call you to the salvation of our Lord Jesus Christ. I call you to the understanding of the position and the works of the Holy Spirit that you may be able to say, I was like that before I agree, but now this is the path and this is the way that I choose to walk in. I pray that Lord, if you are a believer and maybe because of the circumstances that have surrounded you, you have weakened in your faith, call to Jesus Christ. He says, call unto me. And as a father, he quickly responds. Our Lord and our God, I am praying for our, our viewers this day. And I'm praying for ourselves too as the body of Christ. Oh, quicken our faith. You said even though we might have the, uh, f uh, f uh, the faith as small as a mustard seed, it is able to grow and blossom to a huge tree. I am calling to this faith that whoever has staggered, whoever has laxed, whoever has lost it, Lord, start them up and start them back to your faith that you may be able to walk back to the path way of salvation. We know that we have said that whoever does righteous before you is acceptable to you. I pray that our ways may be ex uh, acceptable to you. And when our ways are right with you, you shall not be far from us. You say that you are highly lifted up. You are lofty and above all. But you say you still remain nigh, close to us, even closer than a brother. I pray that Lord, you may, weak, uh, you may quicken every weak, uh, weak uh, vessel in the name of our Lord. You say that you are able to strengthen every hand that gives way. You are able to steady every feet that is not, uh, feet that are not steady. I pray that Lord our knees shall not be weakened but it shall stand knowing that we are soldiers, soldiers of the faith that is and is to come. You say that you are the same yesterday, today and forever. And because your promises are here and amen in Christ Jesus, you shall not leave us. I pray that Lord, even within this situation, you shall strengthen the faith of believers. 
They, them that have questions, they shall find answers in Christ Jesus because of our works. We pray that our works may be able to show a strong people that have a God that they believe in. Because you who promised, indeed, you are faithful to fulfill it even to the last day. Strengthen these people, my Lord, I pray. Let no one be able to be weak in their faith, but be able to confess strength. Because let the weak this morning say, I am strong in Jesus Christ. Let the poor this morning be able to declare, I am rich. Let them that do not have be able to go able to Declare plenty. Let them that have lost what they have lost in the past be able to see a multiplication that is about to come because God, you are about to do us good. Wherever Jesus Christ went, he went about doing good. I speak this goodness to every one of us this morning. I speak this goodness to this faint heart this morning in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. And as the psalmist says, that surely goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives and we shall dwell indeed in the house of the Lord. Let this mercies and goodness be upon this family, be upon this locality, be upon our community, be upon our, our, our larger and extended families in the name of our Lord. Therefore Jesus Christ will say, may you increase as we decrease. In Jesus mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. We want to welcome you in our praise and worship service. Let us rejoice in the presence of the Lord, for the Lord is here. And let us sing, dance, celebrate, for the Lord is about to do us good. Welcome.
one like you, Jehovah God. Serving you is our delight this morning, Jehovah, because there is none like you, Jehovah. Oh, kunaliye kama we mbuwa jabu. Yo mana tunasema buwana tunakuinua. Yo mana tunasema Jehovah niki tunakusimu. We thank you, Jehovah God. This far, Jehovah, my father, is because of your love and your grace, Jehovah God. We do not take our lives for granted, but we thank you, King of Kings. Thank you, Jesus. God all the glory and all the praises for what he has done and for who he is. He is a great God. 
He is an awesome God. We have seen so many things that he has done. And I know that you and me, you have witnessed the power of God. You have witnessed the glory of God, the hand of God. Just like last Sunday as we were sharing the word of God, and I was speaking and I was letting you to know that God is a promise keeper. For sure, our God is faithful to keep his promise. He that promised is faithful. I know that God blessed you through that message. That's what I believe because I too, God ministered to me. So I would like you to join us so that we may share the word of God today. Because God has a greater plan for me and you. And he has a greater plan for you to fulfill. He has a purpose why he created you and me. Before I begin, I would like us to open with a word of prayer. Shall we pray? Everlasting God, King of glory, you who is, who was, who reigns forever and ever, we welcome you in this service today. The Lord, may you help us to fulfill that which is your will and that which is your purpose. Because we know that God, creator of heaven and earth, you have so many things that you like to fulfill on this earth using us. And that's why today we have come that you may speak to us, that we may hear that which you want us to speak today. Lord, as, we speak, as I speak, Lord, I pray that you may open the ear of our understanding that we may know that which you're saying. So that at the end of it all, we will be blessed and we will be able to walk in the power that you have given. We thank you and we bless you, God. Even this time as we are hearing your word, let your teachable spirit be with us. Help us, Lord, that we may, that we may learn that which you're saying so that we may fulfill it. We thank you and we bless you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God has been so good to us and he has done a lot. He has triumphed over so many things that we never knew. He has done great things that you and me cannot do on our own. I know so many of us are excited because now we can go back to church. And I know so many people are happy and all of us are happy. And we too, we are excited that we are going back to church to do things differently. Because you cannot keep on doing the same thing and expecting different results. So I know that even as we are coming back to church and we are worshipping the Lord, lifting his name, I want you to to focus, how have you been walking with the Lord? How was your walk in your closet? How was your walk during the lockdowns? How was it? Did you walk with the Lord? And, and that's why now the Lord is saying that uh, we need to know that he has triumphed over everything. We are excited. We are excited because he has given us a solution to so many problems. I know the pandemic is not yet over. But one thing that I know is that God is in charge and is in control. He has triumphed over every other thing. If it was the plan of the enemy, he has triumphed. If it was the plan of maybe some people, he has triumphed because he is supreme, he is powerful, and is able to do exceedingly above what we think or even imagine. That's why today I'm speaking about this topic that uh, our God has triumphed victoriously. Or uh, God has triumphed. He has triumphed victoriously of our life. He has triumphed victoriously in our family because if it were not for the Lord we would have we would have died if it was not of the Lord the pandemic could have killed us 
The economic challenges around us would have uh, swept us away. But the Lord has made sure that we are standing today, me and you. So, welcome as we continue to read and um, study what the Lord is saying. If you're there, just open with me in the book of Exodus, chapter number 14, verse 27 to 31. We will also read Colossians 1, 12 and 13. Exodus 14, 27, and verse number 31. 27 to 31. And the Bible says this. And Moses stretched forth his hand over the sea, and the sea returned to its strength. When the morning appeared, and the Egyptians fled against it, and Jehovah overthrew the Egyptians in the midst of the sea. And the waters returned and covered the chariots and the horsemen, even all the host of Pharaoh that went in after, the, after them into the sea, there remained not so much as one of them. But the children of Israel walked upon dry land in the midst of the sea, and the waters were a wall unto them, on, the, on their right hand and on their left. Thus Jehovah saved Israel that day out of the hand of Egyptians. And Israel saw the Egyptians dead upon the seashore. And Israel saw the great work which Jehovah did upon the Egyptians, and the people feared Jehovah, and they believed in Jehovah and his servant Moses. This was a time when the children of Israel were coming out of Egypt. God had chosen to save the children of Israel using Moses. And he had done a lot of things. When they were still in Egypt, there were so many plagues. There were so many things that happened, but among the ten, ten plagues that took place in Egypt, none of the plague affected the children of Israel. Israel. None of them died. None of them was affected because God was watching over them. But the children of Egypt, the plagues affected them. Because God had, a pap had chosen to save Israel. And he had chosen that Israel will go into a promised land so that it may worship the Lord, that it may continue to recognize him as God the Father. That's why. Now, when now God was saving the children of Israel and is bringing them out of Egypt, they came to a place where they couldn't move ahead because the Red Sea was before them. Now, this one was, uh, looked like a setback to them. They wondered and asked Moses, what will we do? What will happen? But God spoke to Moses and told him, Tell the children of Israel to wait and see that I am Jehovah. And by the hand of God, God made sure that he separated the waters. And the children of Israel went through the Red Sea and they came on the other side and none of them perished in the Red Sea. But the children of Egypt... They tried to follow them, but they perished in the water because they were not of the children of the promise. And our God has promised us long life. God has promised us eternal life. God has promised us divine health and good things. Why am I speaking about this at a, at a time like this? 
It is because we are going through so many challenges. We are going through the, uh, the COVID-19 season. A season that we have, never, we have never seen it before. And we might be asking ourselves, what will happen? I know the churches are open. We want to go and worship. Some of us are just asking, will I go back to the church? How about if I get COVID-19? But I want to assure you this, that our God has triumphed victoriously. Our God will cover you. The four months that have passed, you have not contracted that disease. But the, the same, same God that saved you during that time, believe in him and trust because he is your keeper. He is your protector. He is your shield and your protector. Just like the children of Israel. The Bible says that. And they came and when, before them was this Red Sea. But it says it, this. But the children of Israel walked upon dry land in the midst of the sea. And the waters were a wall unto them on the right and on their left. God has put a hedge to cover and protect you. Just do the things that we, are, we have been uh, directed by the government. Because the government that is in place, God is the one who has uh, allowed it to be. If it is not against us, then it is for us. They have told us to sanitize. Let us sanitize. They have told us to keep social distance. Let us do it. They have told us to... Uh, to measure the temperature. Let us do all that. But one thing that you must know, don't put your trust in the sanitizations. Don't put your trust in washing of hands. Don't put trust in all those uh, social distancing, but put your trust in God because he has uh, triumphed. Our God has triumphed. He is don't be troubled, don't be shaken because he is able to see you through. And this season is your season for you to realize and to reflect what God can do in your life and in your family. Because if it is all about the bank accounts that we have, if it is maybe about uh, uh, what we have, for sure, so many people who have a lot of money, so many people who are rich, they could not die because of COVID. If, they could, if, if money can save us. Nations like the, the, like the United States, these are superpowers. China. These are nations that, are, that their economy is stable. But because of one little thing, they are all shaken. Their economies are shaken. This is to show us that uh, it is only God who is able to see us through. So we cannot put our trust in people. We cannot put our trust in chariots. We cannot put our trust in anything. That's why I'm preaching this message and uh, letting you to realize that God has triumphed. God has triumphed over Satan in your life. God has triumphed over everything that might hinder you from worshipping him. He has triumphed. I know the children of Israel, when they were in Egypt, they couldn't worship God in the right way. Because they were under slavery. But now God was moving them so that they may come out of Egypt, that they may worship him. In other words, he had to triumph over Pharaoh so that these, the children of Israel can go and worship him in a place where they are free. That's why the Bible tells us that uh, he that is in Christ is free and free indeed. 
and where the spirit of the Lord is, there is total liberty. Trust in the Lord. Walk with him. Know that he will cause you to ride high above everything else. You will soar high like the ego. You will not be shaken because God has triumphed over your life. He has triumphed over the powers of darkness. He has triumphed over every slavery, over every darkness. That's why the Bible tells us in the book of Colossians, if you can just read the book of Colossians, chapter number 1, verse 12 to 14. And the Bible says this, Giving thanks unto the Father who made us meet to be partaker of the inheritance of the saints in light who delivered us out of the powers of darkness and translated us into the kingdom of the son of his love, in whom we have our redemption, redemption, the forgiveness of our sins. So let me tell you this, that if you want the Lord to triumph, then you must choose to accept him as your Lord and Savior so that he may take you from that place of darkness. Allow God to come into your life and triumph. Allow God to come and change every situation in your life. Because one thing that you must realize is this, that every time when you are not worshiping the Lord, you are in darkness. Every time when you are, when you are not putting your trust in the Lord, you are in darkness. But immediately when you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, and if you have accepted Jesus Christ as, Lord and your, as the Lord and Savior of your life, then you need to walk with him. As you walk with him, he will show you light. He will bring you in. Just like the book of Colossians is telling us that we have been translated from the powers of darkness. We were in darkness, but the Lord has moved us. That's why he has triumphed. We were in darkness. For the churches that are, are open, it was a time when this COVID, when it came, it put us in darkness. Some of us, we could not even, some of the churches maybe could not even afford to be on, me, on social media. They couldn't do anything. But the Lord has triumphed because right now, more and more are coming up. Some churches were not if, could not, did not even know if, if they can even stream their sermons on YouTube, on Facebook, because they didn't know how to do it. They couldn't even have a library of, of uh, sermons. But right now, through this COVID, the Lord has triumphed and he has enabled them even to be on those platforms so that the gospel of Jesus Christ can continue to be propagated. The Lord has triumphed. Our God has triumphed. It says that giving thanks unto the Father who made us meet to partake of the inheritance of the saints in light. In other words, when we were in this darkness, we were being denied, denied our inheritance. But I want to assure you, when you are in Christ, you have a good inheritance. That's why the Bible says this. In the book of Proverbs, it says that the boundary lines have fallen for me in pleasant place. Hence, I have a good inheritance. Any Christian that is in Christ, he has a good inheritance. Every Christian that trusts upon the Lord has an inheritance, eternal life. And good life in this life that we are living in. Brother and sister, don't give up on God. Always know that he will triumph over every situation. The situation might look like 
there's no way out. But when you have God, when you put your hope in him, and you just trust in him, giving thanks unto him every time, God is going to come through for you and is going to change the situation because our God has triumphed. He has triumphed. Just like the children of Israel, when you cross to the other side, when you read chapter 15, they sang a new song because God had triumphed over every Egyptian that was following them, over every attack that might be coming into your life, God has triumphed. Over every situation, God has triumphed. As long as you put your trust in him, he will triumph. You know, when we are under bondage, when we are in sin, when we don't know God, we are in slavery. But God has chosen that he may come and save us from this slavery. That's why I'm saying that God has triumphed. When he came and Je when Jesus came and died on the cross, he triumphed over every sin that you have committed. He triumphed over every sin that you'll commit. He triumphed over every sin that you're committing. Past, present, future. That sin is taken away. That's why the Bible says this. In this scripture that uh, we are going to read again. In the book of Colossians 2, 13 to 15, it says, And you being dead through your trespasses and the uncircumcision of your flesh, I say, did he make alive together with him? having forgiven us all our trespasses, having blotted out the bond written in ordinance that was against us, which was contrary to us, and he has taken it out of the way, nailing it to the cross, having, having despoiled the principalities and the powers he made a show of them openly triumphing over them in it. Though we were dead in our trespasses, but God sent his only begotten son that he may come and die on the cross and every handwriting that we had written that we are dead, that the church is dead, that the people are dead, that the world is in darkness. The Lord has come and now is triumphing over everything that we may see light at the end of the tunnel. In other words, every handwriting that was against us has been blotted. Every principality that, that stood before us has been defeated. Every kind of um, works of the enemy, the Lord is bringing it down now. That's why I said in the previous sermon that there's a shifting in the spiritual realm. There's a deployment. Now there's going to be a difference between them that serve the Lord and them that don't. When this pandemic came, if somebody was in business, this was the time that they would shut down. But them that know their God, them that worship the true God, they are still propagating the work of God. Our God has triumphed. That which he wanted to accomplish, he has already done it. And that's why I'm saying that uh, we need to continue trusting the Lord. He has taken us out of the darkness. He has given us our inheritance. Every slavery, every dead thing in our lives, the Lord is reviving it. Because there's a great revival. There's a great awakening that is coming. 
This is the best time that we have seen people worshiping in their houses. In other words, the family altars, fire, has now been experienced from those family altars. I, I, I was watching a, a clip where a family gathered together and they have the one who is playing the, the piano. They have another person who will be giving the sermon. They have another person who is doing the ushering. And all the kids, the father and the mother, they are worshiping the Lord. They are, in, they are, they are just uh, uh, equipping one another. So when these people that have equipped themselves in the private and now they go back to church, every family, if it has been doing the same, when we go back to church, uh, there's a great revival, there's a great awakening that we will experience. Because God has triumphed and there's a shifting that is happening. In our nation, we have seen people streaming and uh, worshiping the Lord through social media. God is doing great things. Brother and sister, it is one thing that you must realize that God has triumphed over everything. God has triumphed over every situation. God has changed every other situation that you thought that it could not be better. It is going to be better. Everything is working for your better. Everything is working together for good. God has planned to do everything that it may work together for good. The Bible says this, And Moses said unto the people, Fear you not, Stand still and see the salvation of Jehovah, which he will work for you today. For the Egyptians whom you see, you shall see them no more. But Moses stood still and told the, ch the children of Israel that the Egyptians that you see, you shall see them no more. And I'm here also to speak to you and let you know that that darkness that you've been seeing Oh, you shall see it no more. That challenge that has been in your life, you shall see it no more. That slavery that has held you bound, you shall see it no more. Stand still and see the salvation of Yahweh. Stand still and see a great revival. Stand still and see yourself manifesting the glory of God. Stand still as a church and see the greatness and the power of our God. Stand still and see our nation flourishing. Stand still and see what the Lord is about to do in your family. This is our time. This is our year that the Lord has chosen to bless us. He can use anything to bless you. Anything. He turns all things together and he just changes them. Everything that uh, was meant to destroy you, he changes it and it becomes a blessing. So in this season, my brother, them that are watching, them that are in the church, in this season, wait upon the Lord and you'll see his hand. Wait upon the Lord and you'll see what he's able to do. Trust him. Wait on him. Do not fear. The Bible says that don't fear because our God has triumphed. God has triumphed. Our Savior has triumphed over every shadow of darkness, over every shadow of death, over every thing that was meant to destroy you. He has triumphed already over it. Why? Because he died for our sins, past, present, future. 
So that which is happening, he has triumphed over. That which happened, he has triumphed over. That which is happening will happen. He has already triumphed over it. Even if it comes near you, it will not harm you. It will not harm you. We have the three Hebrew boys that were given an opportunity to save their life. If they just choose to bow to the Babylonian gods. But they said, we will not bow because we know our God will save us. But even if he doesn't save us, we will not bow. I want you to make a resolution and say this. Through thick and thin, through all that is happening, I will not bow to the pressures because my God has triumphed. And when these four Hebrews boys, when these three Hebrews boys said that they will not bow, God triumphed. And he allowed them to go through the fire to show himself powerful and great, a great God. Allow God in your life to triumph. Allow God to do all that. And let me tell you, my brother, victory shall come your way. And for sure, we shall serve the living God. Let's pray. Father, we thank you and we bless your name. We give you glory and all the adoration. It's a honor, God, just to come and uh, worship you and serve you, God. Lord, King of kings, you who is, you who was. We pray that our God and our Father that you may triumph over everything that we do. In our personal lives, O oh God, may you triumph. In our families, O oh God, may you triumph. In this nation, may you triumph. Because, Lord, you defeated all the principalities on the cross. You defeated every slavery, every attack, that was against us, every handwriting that was written against us, you defeated us, it, O oh God, on our behalf. And that's why, Lord, we pray, even in this season, Lord, come through for us. Triumph, Lord, because you have always triumphed. Victoriously, you have done. We know the God that we serve, he is a powerful God. You are so great and powerful. We thank you and we bless you, Lord, as I pray that you may bless your people. Lord, cause them to always see you triumphing over everything. We thank you and we bless you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, viewers. I just want you to always remember this, that the God that we serve will always triumph. God bless you as we meet in our next service. Amen. I pray that uh, we may also be a people who realize the value of systems within the kingdom of God. And one of this is the attribute of giving our tithes and offerings. And so I call you into giving today that which is the portion of the Lord. The Lord God works in a very unique way within his kingdom. You see, all the other kingdoms of the world will ensure that they will deduct the taxable income from you before they give you your salary. But God trusts you because you are a person of value to him even as you value him. And he gives you everything that you may take it and take 10% and return it back to him. I pray that as you walk within this principle, doors may open for you. And that which seems to be impossible may be made possible because he's a God of principle. So you can send your tithes if you are a, our member through the number if you are watching from Kenya then the Safaricom, which is the mobile uh, carrier number, uh, you can use it to send it through the pay bill number that is down on the screen. Uh, 
or you can use the TIL number that is also down on the screen. But for our international viewers, I pray that you may log on to our website and that you may find how you can be a part of this great move of God by giving and withholding that principle within your life. Uh, there is a, a, an area where you'll see you can be able to give uh, maybe through pay PayPal or through your card, your Visa, your MasterCard, and uh, you can also do a remittance to uh, the bank. Uh, and we welcome you that you may be able to do this uh, for the glory of God, that this gospel of the kingdom uh, may be able to go forth uh, to the nations. Uh, let me pray for your offering. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you. I thank you for this viewer whom you are impressing in their heart that it is important for them to walk within your principles. I pray that as they give today, you may use it, O oh God, as a sacrifice and that it may be an indicator of how much they value you. As you know the depths of the hearts of men, I pray that you may reward every one of them that which is commensurate to their giving. I pray, O Lord, that through this, may the doors that have been closed in their lives be opened. May this bring them closer to you in relationship. And may this be an indication of the value system where they have placed you in terms of value. Bless them, O oh Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We have come to the end of our service. Our dear viewers, as is our practice, we would want to remind you that coming Sunday we shall be having the Lord's table, the Holy Communion. Remember, we say this and we say it again, that this is a practice of the saints. It is an ordinance that our Lord Jesus Christ told us to do it as often as possible in remembrance of him. So prepare for the elements of the Holy Communion. For those of us who will be in church, who will do it within our service. But for them that are at home and are not able to join our service, prepare for uh, the bread, which is a body uh, representing the body of Christ. Anything bread that is like bread, bread, wafers, anything will do for bread and a drink that will do uh, to represent the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. And we shall be sharing the Holy Communion together coming Sunday. God bless you. Thank you very much for being with, uh, joining us in our service for today. And we want to thank you again for spending your time together with us as we worship the Most High God. We want to thank you for those who are following us within our different channels, Facebook page, uh, YouTube channel. Give us a thumbs up. Uh, ask your friends to join. And remember to subscribe to our channels as we continue in this and as we continue to make the broadcast, not the broadcast of Victory Center Kasarani, but the broadcast of our Lord Jesus Christ. Remember Jesus Christ said, Maranatha. Jesus is coming soon. So let's keep ready and let's keep focused. Remember, God loves you and so do we. God bless you.